done. Oh, sorry. Shit, sorry. Welcome to the B1FO production department. We have two studios used by four producers which run from 4 a.m. till about 10 p.m. each evening. I wanted to know what that grey box is in production with all the knobs and things. This flashy grey boxy thingy is actually like a control centre for the whole studio so every sound that we want to make or every sound that we want to include in a piece of production uh, goes through this thing and we call it a mixing desk or a mixing console but in most cases just a desk. Probably the most important feature of the desk is being able to control each channel, each volume of every sound coming into the desk individually. So anything that we record onto Pro Tools that comes into the desk we can turn the music down a bit or lift up the voiceover or whatever. And this particular desk is actually pretty new and really quite powerful, as well as being able to control the individual volume of every channel coming into this, into the oh, sorry. And this particular desk is actually quite new and really very powerful. Um, we can control, as well as being able to control every channel coming into the desk, um, there are lots of things like being able to control the sound of each channel, such as EQ, compression, and also heaps of special effects like delay and reverb. Uh, 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 uh. So, Pro Tools, what is this? Okay, well originally we had huge tape machines which allowed us to record many separate tracks of audio side by side. But now we do it all with a software program called Pro Tools. Uh, Pro Tools is the biggest and the best multi-tracking system in the entire world. And pretty much everybody uses it in all the professional studios, so we're very lucky to have it. Um, it's non-linear, which is why it's so much better than tape, because it lets us pick up things, move them about, change the position, cut, copy and paste things much as you do. It's like the difference between a typewriter and a word processor. And of course we can make hundreds of changes, and then if we're not happy, we can go back and do it all again. Fine. Well, here's this equipment basically for recording into all the audio pieces we need for a, an audio project, that could be a commercial, uh, comedy sketch, maybe a workplace of the day. We might start with selecting the music. As you can see, there's about 1,300 CDs here, and uh, there's roughly around 124,000 tracks to choose from. So there's a lot of wide varieties here of music. So if you're in commercials, you'll love to raid these, and it's great. Oh, I stuffed up. It's a promo. Okay. All right. So in commercial production, it's quite handy to have all these sound, oh, not sound effects, the beds. <laughs> um, and then we might select some sound effects. In, uh, in production, we have four sound effect libraries, but by, by, by no means do they cover every sound effect we need. Sometimes we, we, we need to make our own sound effects, so watch what I do with this pen hitting this sticky tape. Once we've got all the basic audio requirements that we have, can we do that again, sorry? Well, once we have all the basic audio pieces we require, it's then a matter of putting it in the, the form that the commercial will take. Pro Tools, the system makes that so easy for us because we can actually move them millimetres. We can put them in exactly the right position they should be. No excuses. What about the voiceover? Ah. <laughs> 
Finding the right voiceover for the right job is vital. The best ballsy rock jock in the world would be just hopeless on a comedy sketch and at the same time he wouldn't use Rodney Roode in an ad for feminine hygiene products. Out there in the real world, um, in agency commercials and the big production studios, they might spend all day working on one 30 second commercial, trying out different voices, trying different styles of reading. Uh, we work a lot quicker than that, so we have to make the best of the voices we have available to us. It's then up to us to get the best we can out of the talent. And the way we do that is, first of all, by making sure we're prepared for the session and make sure we understand exactly what we're trying to get from them. And then by giving accurate feedback about what they're doing and how they're doing it and precisely what we want that's not there at the moment. Um, and finally, sometimes it means giving the talent some room to move creatively as well so that they can put their own personality into the script. I can't get my head around is how do you mix it all together? Pretty much the final stage in the whole process is mixing and it's also the most complicated part. You've already added in all your EQ, compression, sound effects, special effects. Now you have to listen to the mix over and over again to make sure that everything is exactly right and you run through a mental checklist. Things like is the voice over clear? Is the music too loud? Is the music appropriate? Are all the edits perfect? Are the effects correct and in the right spot? Does this mix sound interesting and unique and set it apart from all the others? Am I keeping the client's objectives in mind? Is the essential message getting through? Then the finished product is usually mastered, often directly to DCS, or it can be played to air within seconds. How do you get the sexy special effects on the voices? So as mentioned before, the O2R has lots of effects, but Pro Tools actually has the same effects and heaps more. So we often tend to use Pro Tools for the effects. And the big advantage of, of using the effects on Pro Tools is that you can save them in a session so you can recall them later on, because often it can take a long time to get the effect on a voice or whatever just right, so you really only want to do that once. <laughs> just like the O2R, Pro Tools lets you add an effect to any individual track that you like, but as well as that, you can actually just add an effect to a small little piece of audio just by selecting it, adding the effect, and then when I play it back... Good morning from 9. If you ask girl, I glue 500 songs from the 80s, 90s and today. So who makes what? Well, actually, I make all the commercials that you hear on the station. Actually, no, he doesn't. All the outside commercials come in here. All right. There's that. There's CD. There's real. There's Dart. And then there's Sky. Sky comes via satellite, and Dart comes via a huge network of high-quality phone lines. International hotel accommodation now. Okay, now what I have here of course is ISD and I haven't mentioned that yet. What I can do is dial up all the other networks right around Australia and send and receive commercials as well. Mm. And what about the station promos? Promos and sweepers and IDs and things are pretty much anything on the station outside the music, the announcers and the commercials and it's also known as station imaging because it really gives the station an image on the air um, which is something that people pick up subconsciously. Uh. Promos and commercials are actually similar in a way in that you need to record a voiceover to start with and then you most likely add some music afterwards but that's pretty much where the similarity ends. All I usually get is just a very basic script which I need to read thoroughly and make sure that I clearly understand it uh, and that I understand the direction that's required and after that then I need to really choose I need to choose some music that's exactly right and often it can be difficult choosing the right piece of music because if it's not if it's not exactly right the promo's not going to work um, <laughs> luxury that I do have over commercials is that I'm not restricted to just the production library and I can use pretty much any music that I like because the music that we use in a promo is really promoting the music as such as opposed to using the music to sell a client's product. So after adding music to the promo I then need to decide whether it needs spicing up and in most cases it does so I then need to work out any special effects that I can use or any effects that I can use through the promo to just like help break the thing up 
Um, often it's required so the listener doesn't get bored and whether there's any effects that I can add to the actual voice or the music track as well to help give the whole thing some colour. Carl do I, does Carl do anything? No. No, I don't think he does. No. I'm exclusively devoted to the uh, to the morning crew. I look after all the audio production on their behalf. Uh, it's never the same, really. Two days are very different. I get there early in the morning, four o'clock-ish. I cut up interviews, gotcha calls, sometimes have to deal with Brendan, song parodies, put together anything they require to help their show out. No two days are the same. Love it. Can I do it again? Now, tell me, guys, what is the production team's goal? Hey, uh, Dino, can yeah? I get just a little more emphasis on goal? Sure. What is the production team's goal? <coughs> Outstanding audio every time. Outstanding audio every time. Outstanding audio every time. Never admit to being Brendan's brother. How do you get outstanding audio? Well, first and foremost, we need to really understand, you know, the uh, most important thing is the aims and objectives that we are trying to achieve from this audio thing. Yeah, hang on. The commercial or the audio piece we're doing, what does the client want to achieve? Who are we aiming it at? And more importantly, what methods are we going to employ to make this happen? Yeah, okay, sure. Thanks, Carl. Customer service is our focus. We make sure that they get their cassette fly or with, with their commercial with their commercial on the cassette. And if there's any dubs to be sent out to any other stations, we make sure that they get it on time. Attention to detail is also very important. It's really crucial to make sure that every little part in a promo is exactly right. Because if there's one little bit that stands out that isn't right, it's going to sound really obvious and the whole promo is going to fall over and fail to meet its objectives. And specific things that we need to have attention to detail to uh, include things like making sure the voiceover is cut up correctly, um, making sure the word like isn't cut off at the start of a sentence or even halfway through a breath, which can sound really obvious. Uh, making sure the music's right, making sure the effects that you use don't sound dicky or even overused, and making sure that the whole sound of the promo actually works, because um, if it doesn't, then you really need to take a different approach. And often you can spend a lot of time on the one promo with a theory that sounds good in your head, but in reality doesn't really work, despite persistent efforts to try and make it work. <laughs> Many things have to be right to make outstanding audio. You need the best equipment, the best voice talent, the best writers, the best support. But mostly it's about having the right attitude, about having people who care about what they're doing, and people who want to be the best that they can be.